Okay, so the last video I did was on Sunday where I mentioned gold possibly being the best asset to hold for what looks to be a financial crisis, 2023 financial crisis. I think we are in the first innings of that, uh, led by the rate increases. I always thought that the rate rises were the most important thing and that the system would break. And that looks like exactly what, what happened because banks were borrowing short and buying long-term yields. But since the yield curve inverted with short-term rates going higher than long-term, they had to they were in a losing position and it was just increasingly losing and um yeah these are just the first few banks to have encountered problems i still think that there's a i think a six to nine month delay at least from the first rate increases so we've had quite a few and there are quite a few banks and they all follow the same strategy so this is not over even though the fdic stupidly has a new policy now because of the the administration to backstop all deposits uh, higher than 250,000. That's ridiculous. You know, talk about moral hazard and individual responsibility. They have enough money to investigate, you know, the banks that they're depositing their money on. So anyway, I'm not going to get too philosophical. I think the whole thing is ridiculous and it's probably the worst case scenario reaction and it's not over. So let's look at what happened. I'll cover quite a few assets, the usual ones, but also crypto because that had a nice pop that benefited from, from the banks looking unstable. So I understand why that went up, although it did close below 25K yesterday, despite having a nice move up. Uh, I think it almost ventured into the 26K where it probably did, but it closed below 25K. So that's um, not the best looking candle. <coughs> But um, gold, especially, you know, gold and silver and the miners, I noticed they went up a lot. I did say they would keep going up. I did say silver would have to catch up with gold. And I also said that the miners would have to catch up too because they were being pulled down by the market, but pulled up by gold and silver. But they would have to be pulled up more because um, it's the one sector that that would benefit, you know, gold benefited. And, and that's what happened too. We had a nice plus 6, plus 7% day in the miners and silver. So very happy with that. And I also noticed that the miners and the precious metals would go up even when the markets went down. You know, I would all of a sudden see the market go down and gold went up and the miners, which way they're going to go up. And also when the markets went up, they would also go up. So I'm not just saying they kept on going up in one straight line, but overall, I noticed it would go up regardless. So that's very, very nice and healthy to see. And imagine you have a market flush coming, which I think is coming and the precious metals and the equities go up. That would be beautiful. I mean, that would be really good. So so let's take a look at the markets. S&P here, you can see this is the Friday close. Okay, Monday we went up a little bit, although still it was a red close, despite this green candle. Um, and then yesterday we tagged the prior resistance. I think what's going to happen here, okay, we've tagged resistance here. We're going to go back down in the S&P. That's what I truly believe. We'll take a look at the Dow Jones and the Russell, but I think those two will lead the way down. I think this little move back up is unjustified. I understand why it happened, because we saved the banks from a financial crisis. We did not. It's just a, a reaction for now. I, I understand it, but I think we're going to go back down. We tag resistance, close below it. The Nasdaq, however, pretty strong stuff. It never really went down too much. Closed you know, pretty well into above support here and now close a high of day yesterday pretty much i still think we're going to close today we'll probably go down a little bit but most significantly close below this descending line again so i don't think the nasdaq will go higher today the dow jones though these two dow jones and russell this is what you want to look at look at this didn't move up too much a little bit i think um didn't even tag this resistance here i think we're going to go back down and it won't take much to you know, close below this. So maybe not today, but I think as soon as we close below this little candle here, the low of day, let's call it, let's say 31,500, a close around there would mean we're going back down to, to this level, you know, and it would take down the other two indices. And then you can say, wow, the Dow Jones is really going to go to its second last support because I remember looking at it over here whilst it was making this huge run up here. I thought, wow, how the hell is the Dow going to go back down again? You know, it's got a long way down to go. Well, it stopped acting as strong. It started to underperform the others. It was one of the first indices to go down. 
Again, not going up too much on the bounce. Probably going to lead the way down. And before you know it, we're down here. Let's look at the Russell. Same sort of thing, although even weaker. Already hit second last support. You know, not the best candle here. It tagged this ascending, which acted as resistance. We also have this horizontal resistance nearby. So quite a lot of resistance around here. We closed here. You know, today if we go down a little bit, and again, I'll be watching the banks, the XLF ETF, because that will probably lead the market down. Once the XLF goes down on certain banks, like Credit Suisse, by the way, my little favorite, that one might have a run soon. Um, you know, I think the banking stocks will start to flush, taking down, taking down the markets. And, you know, we have a bit of a move down here. If we start to test this support here, we're going down to the last support in the Russell. And believe me, if we're going down there, you cannot have these indices green. So if we have a little bit more of a move down and we start to close below this 170, let's say, nice psychological number and probably is the real support. Uh, we're going down to here and we're looking like we're going to flush to new all-time lows. So, yeah, and that'll probably help the Dow Jones lose its support. So watch out, this financial crisis is not over, it's just beginning. And at the same time, we have a recession, at the same time, we have rate increases, we have inflation, we have war, it's literally the perfect scenario um, for, for, for a bear market, which we are still in. The VIX, you know, nice spike, finally, I was giving up on it, and finally, it started to spike up, doing what it should do. Uh, you know, I did say, look, this descending line would act as resistance if we ever get up there. I did say 30. We did actually break above 30, which is incredible. But look how brief that was. The thing about the VIX is it always gets slammed. As soon as the markets are bouncing and goes up a little bit, the VIX gets slammed. Although I did actually notice some periods where the market would go up and the VIX would also go up. So that's just the VIX being totally underpriced. And, um, you know, people are making up for it. People were buying it all the way up here in 26 zone when they want, didn't want it below 19. It's funny how the market works. But, you know, now it's probably repriced a little better. I still think we'll go up a little bit more in the VIX. I think it belongs above 26 right now, between 26 and 30. So the VIX has become relevant again and, and um, more trustworthy, let's say. But it was good to see a nice spike because that's that's what you should get from the VIX in a black swan event. Now let's look at the yields. The yields, I'm going to have to redo my charts because this is just pure fear bond buying. Look at this, just absolutely terrified. Let's buy short-term bonds. And, you know, that's kind of the story behind the crisis. Why am I leaving my money at the banks where I'm getting 0%? when I can just buy short term and get four or 5%. So, and that's kind of what, what the story was about. You know, a lot of people just um, taking their money out of the small banks too, because they had bought long-term yields and they borrowed short. So, but anyway, here, this is just pure bond buying mania. It's destroyed the chart a little bit, which I don't mind. It's, it now means this ascending is obsolete completely. I like it when that happens too. These horizontal lines, I still think, are a little relevant. So because you can see that sort of went a bit above but didn't close above here, we closed just below it. So to me, the horizontal still counts. This one, I'm not sure if it counts. Or maybe if it does go a little higher, I've got to see how it acts because this used to be resistance, you can see. But again, we just went straight through it. So I'm going to give it one last chance to tag it. But if it sort of closes above or just below and it doesn't act as resistance, I'll delete this. This one too, I don't know. You know what, I, when you're not sure, just don't have a line, I think. I'll just leave this one up here. This is obviously resistance. Um, they were working perfectly before these lines, but now because of what's happened, it's it's no longer the case. Obviously, I can add this one here because this is the low. Let's leave it like that for now. See how it reacts if we, if we start to test these lines. The two-year, same thing here. I think this... This low here, which also coincides with this low, kind of counts. I mean, yes, we ventured below it, but not too far. And, you know, the close was pretty much around that point anyway. So I'm going to leave that horizontal and this one up here. The ascending I just deleted because that also no longer counts. So here we've just got this massive gap where we have to let the chart start to play out, you know, and create new lines. So obviously we have a bit of a gap here. You could say this is one. 
you can see this maybe this zone here but i'm not going to do it. i'm just going to leave it nice and open open waters um but it's quite exciting just when something like this happens destroys the chart and you have to start again no problem so here a lot of bond buying out of fear and now okay a bit of a retracement and will people start to sell bonds and will the yields go up again remember this is the two year this is the most important one we have to see i think the dynamics have changed now the, the cpi and the recession and the rate increases has been trumped by this banking crisis so five year same sort of thing i think i left the ascending here because it still sort of counts <laughs> uh, this one i can delete to horizontal i can probably delete too went straight through it used to be relevant yeah let's just see if we can take the prior high out anyway yeah i'll just let it let it trade freely the five year like the others the 10 year same sort of thing let's delete this line this horizontal still works the ascending i don't think it counts too much yeah let's just see how it goes i mean the yields have totally just you know the pattern has totally been destroyed now so Let's just see how it goes. So yields obviously destroyed, creeping back up. Let's just see what happens, especially with the news. Now let's look at the dollar. This is also quite interesting. So the dollar went down, which is quite, I'm not going to say rare, but you know, when you have a real crisis, you tend to expect the dollar to go up. Here it went down. And it didn't go down too much though. It did take out this support zone, not too much. So it becomes invalid, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, this one I'm also going to delete. And in fact, okay, so this horizontal resistance obviously is still in play. That that totally makes sense. These All these lines above make sense. This ascending, though, I was thinking about it. It doesn't really make sense anymore. Not only because we sort of breached it here. I just sort of gave it the benefit of the doubt. But now, if we sort of take out this zone, we're already trading below it. And I think it's better to have one horizontal line than this ascending. I'm actually going to delete this. I've had it there for a long time. I think it used to be relevant, but now just because of what's happened, I feel like having this one and this one instead. Just don't think the ascending counts that much anymore. So let's see what happens. Uh, I, you know, the immediate reaction was the dollar goes down as the crisis unfolds. It didn't go down too much though. And I did notice a bit of buying, you know. So I just feel like it's not over. We could have a move back up. We could still break out of this zone. Although with what they've done now to ensure over 250K, the dollar cannot benefit from that. And, um, you know, now there's talk of pausing or there's talk of 25 instead of 50 basis points. That's bearish for the dollar. So I'm just going to watch it play out because it can go up on a financial crisis moment, which it hasn't done. Um, but also, you know, CPI, interest rates, everything that's, coming up here i feel like it's bearish so i'm just going to leave these trend lines in and let it you know let it test one of them and see how see how that works out so i'm just going to leave the dollar as it is let's look at commodities copper okay so these trend lines look quite good you know this this one here it's holding if it flushes we go down to here yeah i think these trend lines are correct so i'll leave it as it is natural gas this one this one's doing quite well so you know we've sort of retested the zone we haven't really moved that much in natural gas actually so i'm just going to let it play out i've already bought this zone once i did say i was going to buy again if we get down here we didn't do that so I'm just going to leave it let it play out i think we will actually move up this is natural gas sort of held its own whilst everything else was going down oil look at that that's gone lower. That's taken out this zone. Now it's in the buy zone. So let's see what happens here. This is looking quite weak though. I can now delete these lines. This isn't a strong sort of support zone, but still, you know, if we go a little lower and close below this, we're going to go to the mid 60s, as I've said before, which is why the lines are there. So watch out with, uh, with oil. Uranium, which I've never really covered. Here you can see uranium has not benefited from this crisis. It's been going down whilst the metals, the gold and silver have been going up. So, and you can see we're hitting, I need to redo these lines in, in, in white maybe, but 
you can see we're we're getting to the lower range here, very close to support, strong support. So that's quite impressive. Let me just move this one up a bit. Yeah, uranium really is uh, just being smashed out of this uh, crisis. And I'm going to start covering some uranium stocks, Aramco, um, CCJ, for example, one of my favorite ones. But for now, you can just see uranium has not benefited at all. Um, now let's look at gold and silver. Massive move up, bit of a retracement today so far. I don't think it'll go down too much. <laughs> we have these little support zones on the way. It's actually around support now, 1885-ish should be about support. So let's say about there. I do still think that it's possible. If we start to see some banks going down again and the same, the same crisis unfolding with a different bank, we should go and test 19, uh, 1950 at least, in my opinion. So a nice move up, small retracement so far. You can see the support on the way down. Silver caught up with gold. It was really, hadn't moved too much. And look at this smash right through, hit this resistance. And now it's just following gold a little bit sideways. Let's see if it can hold and then go back up. And finally, the miners. You know, look at this. It had not reacted too well with the market going down. But it finally caught up. Look at this massive gap up and run. And also yesterday, a nice higher close. So, but, you know, today, if gold sort of retraces a bit, you can expect the miners to, to go back down a little bit too. Still a lot of room to run, just like silver and a bit of gold. So GDXJ, same sort of thing. That's it. I just want to do a video because I hadn't done one in a few days because I was sick. Um, Obviously, we all know the news. I still think that the markets will go down. I still think gold will go up. The miners, I'm not so sure. If everything starts to go down hard, they could also be red. Um, we've seen those days. So it's just interesting to see how all those dynamics play out. Finally, with Bitcoin, look at this here, you know, breached above 25K. Yeah, it did go above 26K, but, you know, closed below 25, the all-important 25. Today, if it doesn't really close above 25K-ish, I'd expect it to start retracing a bit, a bit like gold. But so far, it's been the strongest asset, I would say. So, yeah, and also look at this. I mean, you know, it had just broken down. <laughs> I remember saying, oh, it's going to go back down again, and it did. But then when this crisis unfolded, totally reversed higher. So, I mean, all the charts have been somewhat destroyed. Maybe not gold and silver. They're still in line with the prior uh, trend lines, but... You know, Bitcoin yields, everything sort of destroyed. So let's just see what happens. And um, I'll do another video tonight.